All right, we're live here with Horseplay Live on Cut. That's redundant, but that's okay. Today's title is April Fools and Immersion versus Rea Realism. How does it say reality? We're also going to be talking about virtual reality, Hearthstone, a lot of League of Legends stuff. We can kind of go back to our roots. And uh, today's April 3rd, two days after April Fools. But uh, there's still plenty of April Fools going around. And uh, what else? What else? What can we say here for the pregame? You got anything, Obi? It's coming. <laughs> That's what she said. No, she said, I'm coming. I said, it's coming. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Unable to create a file output stream. Hmm. Not good. Oh, that's weird. Give me some wonky stuff. My internet cut out earlier today, so hopefully it won't do it during the stream. Oh, that's why I say I moved. I moved a bunch of everything into like programs files and uh, cleaned up my hard drives. Yeah, I know how that is. So we're just gonna go with recordings. Oh, shizzle. Got some epic lag. Oh, that's why I was viewing my own stream. Uh -huh. Let me close out of that. I don't need to be in there. All right, that's good. Yeah, I think, uh, my internet is dying of heat exhaustion, because I know I am. Now, word of warning, if you guys hear random stuff in the background, because I have my window open, and there might be some ghetto people floating around. The same. Let me know when you start up the music, Obi. I will. I'm I'm having issues right now. You what? I'm having issues right now. Uh aren't we all that's gonna be the theme tonight. Dude, it's just like everything's since I moved everything, it doesn't want to uh actually save where I want it to resave to the recording. And it might be uh it's, might be a uh, issue with access to the folder because Windows does tend to like to do that. We got some tweets already here. I know, I right hear. And my laser's firing. <laughs> that sounds suggestive. He was here in the chat. No one in the chat yet. Oh. We're staying at. We need standing here. This is gonna be about stuff that he was interested in. Uh... We're getting a lot of interest, a lot of our engagement on Pinterest. I'm gonna have to start doing more stuff on Pinterest. Um, it's not saving, and I don't know why. Oh, I'd ask you what folder you're saving it to, but I don't want it on the air. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's E. I mean, it's. Just change it to a different folder. Something right off your uh, C drive. <clears throat> it's part of the folder you're trying to put it in. Oh, no, it's not working for anything. Hmm. File path. I'll just put it on this one, I guess. Um, April Fool. We might have a long pregame tonight, guys, while we get everything situated. 
I do apologize. Music's going to start in about two, about literally like less than a, less than a minute. So one second. Now let's see. You're under broadcast settings. Yep. And you have the file path set up there. I'm actually doing it right now. Okay. Give me a second. It definitely helps when you have that recording. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just crack open this beer right now because I'm freaking. Uh -oh. Tonight I got something yeah, a little special. It won't, it won't even save on uh, the uh, C drive. Oh, that's good. You didn't see that. I did see that. I had a little dribble on the side. I had to get it. A little dribble. A <laughs> little dribble. So it's not even letting you do it on the C drive? No. Nah, that's not good. Did you I update? I re um, yeah, I just... did up, but it's not. Restart it, definitely. I already did that. I'm going to try this again. Uh, Ops can be temperamental sometimes. Oh, yeah, I know. It's, it's not a big deal. I just don't want people to be waiting that are waiting and saying, oh, hey, you know, why are Yogi and Obi talking about this shit? There's no stream up. I don't want to know. <laughs> okay, leave that open. What am I? Back to my Steam library. Are you serious? Speaking oh, of Steam, there's a lot of cool stuff on sale there. It's dangerous. I don't even want to talk about Steam right now. Mm. Oh no! Oh Lord! Get me all worked up before the show even starts. Thanks, Yogi. Makes me feel good. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. It was going on the all games chat here. I think I have it now. That's we're good. All right, we're going to start this. Uh, I'm going to start my side up here right now. I believe I am live now. Um, maybe. Yeah, I should be live. All right. I'm going to start some music, yo. All right, let me know when. Right now. Do 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 do. And welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to Horseplay. This is Obi-Wan X2 right here, along with, right next to me, Yogizilla. Yo, yo. Make sure I got my camera right over there. Hey, guys, what's going on? We are here. We are live. It is Thursday. And I got to turn the music down a little bit because, um, once again, I basically... And it's gonna go to off. It is Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> it did. It went right to, right off. But welcome back, guys. This is Horse Plate. It is Thursday, and I'm gonna say this 16 more times until I get the date. April 3rd, 2014. And yes, the date is right this time. I checked that before the show started, because remember last week, Yogi. I know. I'm sorry. Yeah. If my, my head looks kind of funny today, guys, my headphones are actually broken right here. So I'm just trying to, you know, I actually had a, I actually had a thing that I was going to, you know, get some duct tape. But I figured that'd be kind of a little bit too ghetto. Back in episode 16, titled April Fools and Immersions versus Realism. I think I have it in the, 
on the screen here a little bit. He he actually just changed it up. If, if you guys don't believe me, but I have April Fools and realism versus immersism. Say that word. Oh yeah, immersion. Sorry, I, did. I did. I did change it, but I changed it several minutes ago. But anyway. We're 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 just we're just gonna have fun, guys. It's it's yeah. That's all we're gonna have. We're just gonna have fun. <laughs> I done this. I done left everything. But what, like I said before, guys, I am joined by Yogi Zilla. Um, and what's up, man? So <laughs> you're supposed to say that word right there. Where are we supposed that to start? One. Yeah, that one. He's supposed to get wasabi. Uh, well, you gotta switch it up a little bit. I don't want us to be scripted, you know. Well, we yeah, don't want to be robots. I want, the, I want the intro to be somewhat scripted because then I'll forget to sh say shit. So <laughs> it's gotta be a little bit. If the intro's gonna be scripted, we need to find something that's like we could coin, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, kind of like Sean Freeman does in Zombie Cast. Like he's got like a little trademark opening the same thing he does a knuckleballer he just has a way, certain way of opening up we'll get there well, but no, uh, and i'm and i'm writing i'm actually dude you 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 got me i actually instead of getting on my computer and just having like several different notepads open i've actually got on it and i went old school <laughs> pen and paper actually older than that pencil and paper and you know what? I even went out and looked out for a freaking flat stone with a pick, a chisel the other day. Okay. <laughs> to write this shit down. Just so I don't forget. What are you writing the Ten Commandments over again? Clink, 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 clink. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, if that helps. Well, no, not the Ten Commandments, but. I don't want to get too deep into it, but I'm going to ask you uh, did you watch the Walking Dead season finale yet? Season four? No. Yeah. That's a no. I already know. Hanging his head in shame. All I'm going to say is those last two episodes, uh, 15 and 16, if I'm not mistaken, amazing. Probably the best episodes they've made yet. So, and you got time to catch up because now the show's on a hiatus for however long it's going to be. Uh, but wow. And uh, a lot of the predictions we talked about on episode 10 and 11, if I'm not mistaken, or was it 11 and 12? I forget. Our zombie talk series. A lot of the stuff that we predicted, along with Matt Bradford and Normie and uh, Sean Freeman, starting to come true. So things Don't are unveiling. Predictions just come true, and you just like you're like, "Hey, I said that was gonna happen, and it happened." Yeah, like how I treated my wife the first time she started watching it, and I had already <laughs> been like ten, fifteen episodes into it. She's like, right, "How many episodes have you watched?" Three, honey. <laughs> Well, it's good when when uh, it's good when a show or even a video game, anything story driven, when you can like uh, read it or watch it or listen to it, and you can start making your own conclusions. So long as they still make you second guess yourself a little bit and think about the realm of possibilities, you know, because you don't want it to be so predictable when it's like ah so obvious, you know. You don't want it to be cliche either. But this was de this definitely threw some curveballs, or as Sean would say, some knuckleballs at you, well, and it's, it's good. And and what I was uh, thinking about earlier is um, when I told, was talking to my wife about it, I was, you know, they were, she was saying it's so predictable already that I can tell what's going to happen in the latest, latest, <laughs> the late season. And the only thing I could say to her is, no, you don't. Because she was saying, oh, this is going to happen, this should happen, this should happen, this should happen. Oh, he should get killed off, you know, being, um, damn, I forgot his name again, the badass crossbow. You know, she was thinking, you know, how oh, he needs to be killed off right off the bat. We 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 don't need to get into this finale. <laughs> Seriously. Well, you know, I just figured I'd at least mention so it. I talk about today. <laughs> Funny. You know, I, I figured it's gonna be on people's minds. It's it's, it's the kind of episode. I mean, the last two episodes definitely leave an impression. So mm -hmm. maybe we'll talk about an upcoming episode when everybody's caught up. Maybe we have some call-ins, but keeping it in your back you pocket. Know. You know what? I will get on the WCW. Is that where it's at, right? No. Yes. No. The show, the, net, the network? The channel's not. Yeah. A, uh, AMC. I think it's the only thing okay. I can really think of that's on AMC. Is it AMC, really? Yeah. Huh. Well, then I will get online, and I will check it out and see if I can't get those uh, last couple episodes. Because if I don't TiVo them, or not, not TiVo, but if I don't um, DVR them, 
then I won't I won't look for another showing of it just because. Well, I want to watch it the same day, or I'm just going to look online the next day after because they usually got an episode up. R- rumors on the street is that there's a uh, site called Couch Tuner. Um, I don't I haven't verified this myself, but I hear you can uh, you can become a a um, a sailor of the Caribbean and ex- and explore. Explore the seven seas of uh of television, so just saying. <laughs> Two thumbs up. <laughs> Check a pose. Yeah, well, if you guys that are you guys that are actually listening to the podcast, I'm just sitting here popping up with two thumbs up every two seconds, saying that I you know I I've, I've tried it. I do approve of that. <laughs> we both do it, guys, and everybody that watches every week is we both. We'll cut each other off. We are the worst two hosts for each other ever, but it works. It's horseplay, <laughs> guys. Um, but we do want to give a couple shout-outs to some of our friends out there. And um, we want to make sure the uh, – I don't know. Did you want to do this, yoga? I was just going to keep going with it. Shout-outs to yeah. the Goog Reborn from the party chat, Tim Curtis Jr. Oh, and Is the this? Goog says he's no longer the Goog. Now he's just he's Ryan. He's Ryan Nexus on Twitch, and he start, he's going to start streaming, so we, we're going to take him under our wings and, and, and groom him for the experience. He's yep, doing yep. some Skyrim uh, mods and stuff. Yep, definitely. Okay, well, the Goog Reborn, formerly known, is now Ryan. Yes. That's, that's, that's it. <laughs> from, the, <laughs> from the party chat, Tim Curtis Jr., of course, we love you, buddy. Always... Uh, okay. You gotta say the next name. SG. It's, it's it's Bridget. I know. I know who it is. It's SG and Bridget. Yes. From. Damn it. Lovely, lovely couple <laughs> and the lovely hosts of the R9 cast. <laughs> yes, I will get to know all you guys. I am so sorry. <laughs> Do you think about this, guys? That you know, one week I'm sitting here saying this is just gonna be something that I'm doing with one of my friends that we have fun and we get to just talk. You know what I mean? We get to just BS all the time. To to getting text, I mean multiple text on, hey, dude, we need to do this, 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 and this. Oh, yeah, and by the way, while you're doing that 400 things, you need to do this 400 things as well just so we can – and then on top of that, I want you to join all these different networks, and then you got to be involved in every one of them. <laughs> so when you get a guy like me – Okay, and I'm just a gamer. I'm not a hardcore networker. I'm not a internet. I'm not a computer guy by any means. When you get a guy like me that just wants to play the damn game, that jumped into, I have total faith in my partner with you know with you guys know him, Yogi. Uh, that's not the issue. But when you jump into somebody like me where you just play the video games, not really involved in communities, you know, you say something every now and then, but all of a sudden I have to be involved in. Not have to be. I want to be involved. Today I was listening to B Team podcast right before this one started, and I'm thinking they're gonna go off and you know they're gonna have a good topic. Oh my god! I wish I would have been in that call. <laughs> when, we the, when we get back to a console, um, and I'll just say this, and we'll we'll move forward. When we get back to a console talk, uh, when we're back on the Xbox and PlayStation. For you guys will hear my final verdict. <laughs> the final verdict from Obi. You will hear that. But we want to get out some more normal late, of course, Normie 477. And uh, of course, Sean Freeman Pimp Daddy. Of course. Got Matt Bradford, or like I like to call him, Motto. Motto. Hello, Moto. <laughs> Chipsella, Fred Rojas, Dark Risings. King Dean. Did I say that right? Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. And, okay, I'm not going to say that last one. I am. I'm not even going to mess it up. King Dean Asmodeus. That one right there. And all our friends at allgames.com. If you guys are looking just for an interesting chat, go check those guys out. I was in there for like 10 minutes this morning. And even this morning, oh, my goodness. It was uh, pretty pretty interesting. But we really appreciate all all the help from everybody, and we want a little special uh, 
a special thank you and, and props to uh, a couple clans that myself and, and Yogi play with. Of course, Yogi's clans, NOF, and I'm going to say just because I like saying the word, Nipples of Fate, and of course mine right down here below me, uh, 21st uh, Regiment for the, uh, the Armor 2. So you guys go ahead and get those uh, two clans a, a, a look-see. Um, we are on engine. I don't know exactly where Yogi is. I'm sure he's going to say it here in about half a second. About what? <laughs> Where's your Do plan located? <laughs> oh, uh, we have n-o-f.com. Now, I was just stuck on the fact that you, you said your clan name, and I swear I sounded like... And you sounded like, uh, I don't know, like... Uh, it was like a mix of the Swedish chef and like a uh, NASCAR racer announcer type thing. I think, okay. <laughs> don't give me the Popeye look. A squinty okay. eye at me. Um... Where you? <laughs> where you? <laughs> oh God, I can't do it. I, can't, I used to be able to do pop. I can't do it anymore. Dude, the squinty eye thing is. I I I I blame my mom. Okay, the squinty eye thing is because like right here, you know where most guys' cheekbones they go down. Mine go, they flare out. So then it makes my eyes really tiny. So when I smile, I look like this. You know. But anyway. But yes, we really appreciate everybody uh, just for all the support they've given us. Uh, we really do appreciate it from the bottom of our heart. But don't forget to tweet us throughout the show. Oh, right here, Obi-Wan-X2 and over there at YogiZilla. And of course, the one thing, if Yogi will just do this right there. Yogi, do this for me. Right there, guys, look right above his head. There's a voicemail right there, number. And right above that is our network blog. It is our network, guys. Yes, we are on a network. Geekyantics.wordpress.com. And, of course, you guys can listen to all the, sh uh, all the if you guys missed of any of the shows, Stitcher, iTunes, uh, TuneIn Radio. I'm going to miss one because I'm not even reading it anymore because he said don't be that. <laughs> but, anyway, everything and anything that you guys do want to find out about horseplay, the show, or just what we are doing in general, you guys can head over to, of course, the uh, – uh, Geeky Antics Network Global, of course, gang for short, at geekyantics.wordpress.com. You can check out everything. I think I got it, right? Yeah. Yes. And and we are also on Windows slash Zune slash Xbox Marketplace for podcasts. Yes, so. Hey. hey, Yogi, you want to tell them what the first thing I said to you is, the first text was? Hey, text them back. Maybe we can get some game time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, can we get? Does that mean we can get a free Xbox One? Hey, we might, we might get this soon enough. No, I don't want that. I just, I just want some. I just want a, a speak, card. A speak for yourself. I mean, I, yeah, yeah, a subscription card would be cool. That could definitely I'm saying, happen. Just get the, you know, uh, what? Well, no, hold on. Um, I can't say this now because, yeah, you know what? I, you know what? I can't say it. I'll wait till the show. I, 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 I yes. Controversial stuff I'm going to say about Xbox. I know, and you were a big fan. I know that, that something happened to change you. In the last day. <laughs> All I'm going to say is I'm still with Xbox One, and we're going to talk about some of the changes over at Microsoft. So, but I don't care. Even if, I don't like PlayStation, but if I got a free PlayStation, I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't complain. I'm just not paying for the darn thing. But anyway, anyway, before we, we get into that, we have some awesome content on, over at the Geeky Antics site. I know we don't want to get into the Xbox versus PlayStation 4 thing all over again. Mm. But we got we, we have some awesome content. One of the pieces we have on there, one of the articles on there is from Fortingard, James Fortingard, who likes to be known as Yuri or just plain old Fort. Um, he's got a piece, Fort, not Fart, just to make that distinction. And um, he's got a piece uh, review on uh, The Raid 2, Berengal, if I pronounce it properly. It's a martial arts movie, so check that out. We're getting a lot of diversity in our content. And uh, Obi has a really excellent piece we were talking about on episode 15 last week, which uh, talks about um, realism units and realism in shooters. And we've built upon that in our latest update that just went up a few minutes before we started recording this, about realism versus um, immersion in games, and we talk about a little bit about virtual reality as well, which is what we're going to talk about on this show. So yeah, it's going to be fun. Yes, you guys can't wait. And also, should we keep going on with the intro spiel? Yeah. 
So yeah, don't forget guys, you can leave us a voicemail or fax if you're so inclined at uh, 206-415-4987. Again, that number is 206-415-4987. Now, a few people were saying we should get a toll-free number um, or be able to accept text messages. That number may change when we do do that, but you know, we're trying to keep it streamlined as possible and not rack up bills. You know, and uh, we're not a, pr a for-profit organization just yet. We're still starting up from the ground up. You know, we're grassroots. But we'll get there. And you'll understand why we say that here in a future segment. Mmm. More, more, more foreshadowing. But yeah, if you leave us voicemails, we will play and respond to your messages live. And, um, yeah. It'll be good to make sure you keep it, uh... You know, you you could you could you could curse up a storm if you're so inclined. The only thing we ask is that you keep it constructive as possible, and uh, short, short and succinct if possible, uh, five minutes or less preferably. And you know, no, nothing too douchebag. You know, don't be like a racist or just go on a flaming uh, bit. Though we might play that too. Uh, the, the the flaming will you know we might have just to feed the trolls. Yeah, yeah. But uh, th those are our preferences. But if you're, if you're shy, you can also email us at geekyantics at gmail.com. And antics is A-N as in Nancy, T-I-C-S. And so, yeah, today on the show, Obi, you excited about this? We got a lot of cool stuff lined up. And I think we're going to make this a thing, try to introduce what we're going to talk about for the rest of the show in the intro. So those, you know, starting off should know what they can know if, if, if they want to listen to the whole episode or not or skip ahead. So we're going to return to our roots in League of Legends, talk more Hearthstone, uh, which uh, Obi and I have been playing and streaming over on our respective channels. Uh, we will also talk about game theory, which I personally am very, very excited about. Um, game mechanics, game theory, game design, all that kind of stuff, the behind the scenes stuff of video games, awesome stuff. And we're going to distinguish, you know, with that, we're going to distinguish realism from immersion and vice versa. You know, how do we, de how do we define realism? Um, is video game violence becoming overplayed? Things, all those tangent issues, and we'll talk about virtual reality as well as part of that. Man, and we'll also maybe point out some April Fools. You know, some people that kind of have derp status going on. Hashtag derp. Hashtag derp status. You know, whichever one might trend. And uh, it's gonna be a great show. I'm excited. What you got, Obi? Oh, look, we got someone in the chat too. Oh yeah. But anyway, I am very excited about this. I can't wait. Um, as you guys know, I did put up in, in just a little something. I put up uh, a, a a blog or post on uh, the geekyantics.wordpress.com. You guys go to check it out right now and respond to that because this, these are going to be read through, uh, throughout the show today during our feature. Getting on with it, though, I don't know where we're at. We are about to segue into Man Crushes and Geek Girls. Hit it. All right, so, you know, we have no guests this week, but we will be opening up the lines after our obligatory news. Good, good, good hitting. Good, good hitting motion. <laughs> Don't forget the baby powder next time for the added effect. But uh, if you want to be a guest or suggest your favorite Man Crushes and Geek Girls, contact us via Twitter or the official gang site. And we gave that information earlier, so just make sure you rewind a little bit to our introduction and get all, all, get all the ways to connect with us. Uh, and we'd love to have you guys. And uh, also, uh, Normie might very well be joining us again. Nor that's uh, yeah. at Normie477. Um, but uh, she's re-entered the workforce because she, she, she was enjoying a lot of free time and gaming time because she was injured. She got to stay home and be a stay-at-home uh, wife slash mom. Lucky her. Oh, girl, uh, I have to get a job. <laughs> but now she's gotten back, so she probably won't be joining us for too many late night sessions uh, unless we start recording earlier or she has a uh, second wind. <laughs> yeah, but you know as well as I do, Normie's second winds are usually really good. They are. <laughs> and, and, and so are her uh, posterior winds, uh, apparently. <laughs> I just want to say the word. I just want to say the post. I just want to say posterior. It makes it's a nice way of saying as. How about now, guys? Sorry about that, guys. We're, of course, the chat again is just like I'm so low. I'm super low, and I don't know why. So you sound good to me, but I have my audio right now at like seventy percent. No, 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 no. I don't do that kind of stuff. <laughs> 
mm, interesting stuff going on in the chat. If you if you hear us say things that make no sense to you, that means you probably should be here for the live show. Just saying. Yes. Yes. If you guys want to know what's going on, you got to be here live. Because if you're not, you're missing out. Trust me. Even if it's one time every great once in a while, you guys got to hit up the live show. But yeah, there's a... Uh, yeah, I don't do that kind of stuff, man. That's just that's just oh, that's terrible. Uh, oh, anyway, of, moving of, on. Of course, we do appreciate. <laughs> of course, we do appreciate all the downloads and and reviews and the thumbs up and follow the subscription, all that stuff that you, you could do on iTunes and uh, Stitcher and all that, whatever's. So anyway, Obi, can I open it up this time? Dude, it's all you. I'm trying not to laugh from the chat. <laughs> Yeah. It's time for the obligatory news. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. So uh I already did it right. Come on. No, it's good. I was re I was re resounding it. <clears throat> I like the sound effect. So in keeping with our recent uh arrow madness, our friends at uh, Starling City Radio report that Obi's favorite character, Roy Happer, Harper, Harper why did I say Happer? <laughs> well, one of your favorite characters will become Arsenal, not Speedy, as a lot of the fans and uh, comic aficionados have uh, assumed. And it's gonna it's gonna be interesting. So apparently, this is more in line with the comics than the cartoons. Um, so he spoiler, he will not be losing his arm more than likely. His arm is safe. All right, for the people that follow the comics and the world of DC, the DC universe more closely, that might make sense. Which one's Ray Harper? I forgot. He's the basically the guy that's becoming kind of uh, uh, Arrow's uh, sidekick. Uh, his Thea's uh, boyfriend. Oh. <laughs> I assume we forget. McMuffin, yes. McMuffin's no, warning us. We didn't say. We did not say he was going to become speedy. We're gonna be say we're saying he's gonna be like a tank. Well, I'm just saying the general community was assu assuming he was gonna become speedy. Well, the general community is nothing but wrong on this issue. Why would you have somebody that has the 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 power of strength or whatever it is? And why would you just totally off track his character and make him fast now? That well, it's because it's because in the cartoon, um, Roy Harper becomes speedy and then he becomes Arsenal, but uh. It doesn't matter anyway because to bypass the speedy part, basically. Yeah, because and all, all, they kind of shot it down anyway because uh, in episode fifteen, I think he said, uh, "Don't call me speedy," you know. And so yeah, that was kind of like a simple uh, way of shooting it down. Without it wasn't him being uh, self-aware of what he would happen. I, he just didn't like the nickname. Dude, I can't wait till he can Roy can actually uh, uh, control his temper and yeah. Work. Dude, oh yeah. my god. Because, dude, if you guys look at it, and we're not going to get too much in depth with this, okay? Because we'll, we'll actually come back to this when actually the season ends. But if you guys think about it, you have the arrow, which is basically just, he's the badass. Or Yogi would say the green arrow um, in the comics. Um, and then you have his sidekick, which is Diggle, which is like a special forces guy. He just freaking runs the table. And then you have the computer nerd, which is Felicity. Um, she's basically runs everything from, you know, she can do anything. She's a friggin' hacker. She's one of the best in the world. And then you got his girlfriend, Sarah, now, which she is a, what, trained uh, assassin, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm looking for. And then you got some of the bad guys, and then uh, and, and then who else was there left? Um, as far as, like, people that uh, have kick-ass powers? The, uh, you you well, said they go in. You got to remember, too... Wait, that's Agents of March Shield. Never mind. I was getting ready. Well, <laughs> I was oh. getting ready to put that guy that uh, lost, the, you know, the guy that ran in after his son uh, on Shield. That uh, <laughs> they had to give him a new leg. Which that last episode of Shield was also really good, dude. Nah. But uh, <laughs> well, we won't. We got more uh, stuff about Arrow, some more news. So let's keep going because uh, we did the Arrow episode already. But we're probably. Uh... I, punched I punched him in his lip, Viper. <laughs> Pissed me off. Yeah, see, people always ask that. I got, you know, I, I don't normally don't mention it because I forget about it. But it's a birthmark, guys. Not the herpes or anything. I didn't get in fight. This, just letting you know that I didn't eat any bad coochie. <laughs> I'm glad that's cleared up now. Let us move on. 
people that's like that's like the burning question for people. It's like you don't have any other things to add to the conversation. I doesn't bother. It doesn't bother me. I'm just saying it's funny. No, it's the, it's it's not that it, I'm just laughing because of how you said it. I know. Deal with I, it. I, I'm used to it already. That's why. But uh, so yeah. Also in uh, episode 16, Suicide Squad, I it just finally clicked with me, especially after listening to Starling City Radio. Like I said, at first I heard her voice, it sounds familiar. Well, it turns out that the voice we heard coming from the cell, there was a girl, they showed the back of her head with blonde hair and pigtails. Mm-hmm. And again, spoilers, so if you're not caught up on Arrow, sorry. But uh, apparently that's Harley Quinn from the Batman universe. So this is awesome because now we're seeing that... Um... Now tying in. Hmm? Now it's tying into each other, right? It's, uh, yeah, the, the girl who did her voice was also the same one that did it on the cartoon, if I'm not mistaken. That's why it sounded familiar. And I think from the video games as well. But um, it's awesome because we're seeing that DC is really committed to um, you know, unfolding their entire universe. And, and they've said themselves that there's no, 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 no characters are you know, off limits you know, as, as far as like, uh, the Batman universe. And there's a lot of characters in Batman. Um, this is a, something that Marvel Angels and Shields has some some trouble with because they're limited in which characters it can include in on the show. But uh, you know, DC and Mar- D- DC and Marvel are gonna be having you know a fight off, you know, because uh, they they have a lot of stuff at stake as far as TV goes. But so so far we've seen on Arrow we've seen Deathstroke, Deadshot, The Flash, which is Barry, the guy that Felicity liked, um, the Huntress, uh, you know, crazy girl that tried to kill her father. She's probably Wait. a... Huh? Never mind. It's the <laughs> cop, the forensic cop, right? That Felicity was kind of in love with for a couple yes, of Yes, the guy that said he was a forensic cop, but we found out he wasn't. That was like his oh, cover yeah, ID. He's, he's Flash, yeah. Yep. Uh, we so saw... there's your Speedy right there. <laughs> but Speedy's a whole different character, so it's like... <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, it's cool that they show how he becomes the Flash, essentially, on right on Arrow, so that's awesome. And he's supposed to, I mean, I'm jumping ahead, I, this is already going to be part of the discussion, but he's supposed to be getting his own spinoff show, and there's rumors that the Huntress might get her own spinoff, and there's some other things they might do. Um, I mean, there's a lot of stuff, but one of the things, um, I think Mark Guggenheim um, is the director, produce, the producer of the show. Um, he confirms the other, you know, definitely other Batman characters will be appearing. And a lot of the fans are hoping for Nightwing or maybe con- Commissioner uh, Gordon, you know. Maybe one of the criminals escape Gotham City and go to Starling City. And then Commissioner Gordon chases him down and he collaborates yeah, with... Cool. Yeah, so that'd be cool. Um, so another... Th- go ahead. Go ahead. Well, the, the, the best thing is what I think would, ha- would be good was if, if Commissioner Gordon would have came in there then you would have something to do with, you know, what happens if Batman has to follow or, commit, you know, Gordon needs help from Batman. Mm. You know what I mean? Where, you know, would that possibly, could that possibly happen? I would not hold my uh, breath. Yeah, I would not hold my breath for, like, Batman or Superman. But, like, as far as villains and supporting characters, I think they'll show me. They might even show Robin. But Batman it's gonna, himself. It's probably going to be Joker that escapes from the insane asylum. Or Riddler or some shit like that. See, Riddler, I would love. I don't know how well Joker would work. Well, it could. Is jo- Joker's, Joker's been in every every freaking Batman. He's got to do something. He's got to spread because. But well, Joker's long, really die sometimes. Joker's also got a real hard on for Batman. I, I think his only ju- duty is to like you know create hell for Batman. Joker, well, Joker and Two Face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, some more, some more um, kind of previews and speculation about Arrow. So uh, I was I was watching a YouTube video. I think it's called Emergency Awesome, and he they were breaking down a lot of interesting things. Um, kind of looking ahead, it, it, there's a lot of leaked information about the well, not necessarily leaked, but some teasers about what the future episodes will be named. So episode, you know, uh, season two, episode eighteen and uh, twenty are respectively titled Deathstroke and Seeing Red. Um, so there's a lot of speculation with that, what that means. Are we going to see the Red Arrow or, um, you know, Deathstroke is going to see learn more about Deathstroke. I mean, he's a, he was already introduced, but what's going to really happen there? There's a chance that um, there's, there was talks about the Suicide Squad becoming its own story arc or spinoff. 
and Deathstroke it, maybe turning kind of like they're kind of anti heroes. They're not really bad. They're not really good. They're the mercenaries for hire. So imagine if Deathstroke joins the Suicide Squad and you know gets over his whole agenda for vengeance, dude. Well, you got you remember that last episode before this, you know, before this, well, the one prior to this one, um, where Diggle came back and got Deadshot from downstairs. Yeah, he's like, no, you're part of my team, dude. So you got to remember, hey, look at this. I gar- I'm, I'm not guaranteeing nothing, but I think this is what I think they're gonna spin off it on, spin it off on, is Deagle, Diggle is still gonna be in with the the, the arrow, but Diggle is actually gonna be like uh, uh like sub like some contracted from the the FBI, the the chick or whoever it was, to run that four man team because guess what, you got Diggle, which is, you know, what is he? He's a commander. He's been in war. He runs teams. You got Deadshot. You got your sniper. Right? Who else we got? Ah, uh, gosh, I forgot already. But, I mean, those are the real key you players. Got strong, you got that big strong guy. You know, there's your tank. Yeah, you got uh, the 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 wannabe Wolverine. <laughs> yeah, the guy that yeah, uh, you got him. There's your tank. Well, he can't die, so um, so he can be shot several times and still live. Uh, you have your uh. What's that one guy? Oh, man. Anyway, but you have a four-man team that I really think Arrow is going to spin off to where, where Diggle is going to have to actually go off and run that team, but still be entwined, intertwined with, 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 uh, with uh, Arrow. Yeah. I, I, I definitely see that um, Suicide Squad alone could That's... become a, um, a spinoff. By the way, shout-out to Pork Chop because... Uh, I would type in the chat, but for some reason, my Twitch chat's being really retarded right now. But, um, yeah, I, I, I think Suicide Squad could even be a movie. I mean, the way they introduced them was just really well done. And it's I think like the Fantastic Four enough. or the, the Fab Four or, you know, whatever. I mean, it's basically going to be a team-oriented movie. And then they could do two or three two or three expansions to the main movie. I mean, then you're, mm-hmm. you're you know, that's just money, really. It just depends on how much they want to do. With that pork chop thing, I want to. This guy, all right. I every now and then when I'm I'm out and you know me, Yogi, I go out and have a cigarette and just kind of relax. Well, I watch Twitch on my phone, and every single night that I'm out there, almost pork chops is playing something, whether it be Black Ops or not Black Ops, but Call of Duty, um, or you know basketball or whatever, and he's part of the reason why PS4 is for me. So that props to you, buddy. Thanks for showing up. But <laughs> what about these? Uh, yeah, are you are you kind of hoping that Teen Titan comes back out for some reason? Well, you know they they stopped doing the Teen Titans uh, comics. They, they that came to a close, and the show also stopped as far as the cartoons went. So that would be awesome as a live action format. I don't know if they can get the budget for it, but I love that whole universe. Oh man, that'd be pretty cool. But anyway, if you guys want to get more into the the Arrow and DC stuff. Definitely check out Emergency Awesome on YouTube and Starling City Radio on uh, Stitcher, iTunes, and uh, AllGames.com. And uh, we're ready to jump into some other news that isn't about uh, comics and whatnot. Uh, you know, GDC, the Global Developers Conference, I believe that's what it stands for. But basically, it's it's a it's kind of like the E3 or PAX for developers only. Uh, mm-hmm. They have a lot of big news that. At face value, it may not be interesting to gamers, but, you know, if you're like me and you you like game design and you do, do game development and you also happen to play video games, there's a lot of good stuff to know. But this, the following news, I think, impacts gamers in a big way because what I'm about to share is something that's going to make indie gaming stronger and also improve the quality of the games that are coming out as a whole. All right, so one of the things is Unity. Um... You know, Unity is one of the uh, kind of development suites and engines that a lot of games are using now because it's really easy to use, and you could do a lot of things through the GUI. Um, you know, and you could ease your way into it without knowing code as well, so that helps out. Um, but as far as the visual stuff, it makes it very easy, uh, relatively speaking. Um, and uh, a lot of the shooters that have come out, the indie shooters and, and FPS games that come out, were developed in uh, Unity. Well, now we're going to see a lot more Unity popping up because they're doing, uh, they're enhancing their GUI, they're putting out more tools, and they're adding full cross-platform support. 
to the point where it's like if you create something for a PC, you know, one click and you can port it over to iOS or to you know Mac or whatever. So that's really interesting. So Unity 5 is coming out in 2015. It's going to be a game changer. Um, one of the, some of the features they have are the physics-based shading, uh, early access to WebOS, and uh, better audio production. Um, it's a little steep for s small, you know, solopreneurs, as I like to call them, or you know, small indie shops. Seventy-five dollars per month per user, if I'm not mistaken. But you can have it on two computers, and you have a one-year commitment, so you're locked into a contract. Now, in contrast, Epic, their Unreal Engine, they are finally opening it up. They're making it open source, and their model is way more competitive. And Unreal Engine, I mean, that's used everywhere uh, for AAA games, even. They're, they're going to open up Unreal Engine 4 for $19 a month. You get access to the source code, all right? No commitments. So you can go month to month. So you can just get what you need, the source code, and then cancel afterward and then start producing the game. And then when you want to get the latest updates and get support from them, reactivate your, your subscription, right? And what's nice about it, I mean, really, it, it costs practically nothing. The only thing they do on top of that uh, subscription model is that they take 5% of all your game sales as royalties, which is more than fair because, I mean, you know, you're not going to get that anywhere else. Getting that kind of power, that, that, that kind of engine that's looks good and also performs really well, dude, it's going to be a great time to be a gamer and a game developer. Definitely. Um... That's that's something that I'm 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 actually looking forward to. Uh, this is necessarily doesn't really uh, you know interest me at this time, and like like you said, with a lot of gamers, it's not going to interest them right now. Um, the time where it will interest them and it will affect them the most is if they're they can utilize a lot of this to keep a lot of their uh, what they're doing or their processes together. You know what yep. I mean? Because you know, like I told you, like we said earlier. You know, I'm just a gamer, and then when all this stuff hit the fan, you know, would this, would this, would this piece or this product right here be good for that issue, that reason? Probably so. You know, I don't really have much to say, and I didn't really um, look into it. But I mean, I, I would, I mean, if if it was something to where they do trial bases and stuff like that for, you know, for people that are really interested, I would actually do it. Um, you know, just like we were talking about before when. You know, if we got some stuff that we had actually had to try and do and make sure that we, we gave feedback every single day, why not? You know, that's just letting us try new stuff that is either just coming out or not out yet. Plus, we can show you guys on the on the live show and tell you guys about it on the podcast. I mean, so it's it's everything is a plus, plus, win, 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 win situation. Now, the only thing that is not winning to me is because I have to do a lot of extra work. <laughs> well, the big he's already used to it. I, I, I'm, yeah. Anyway, well, the biggest part about it is that since it's gonna make uh, development much more, you know, res resource not resource non intensive. It's gonna be cheaper to produce games. That that means they could pass the savings down onto the to the uh, consumer, and also a lot of people that really don't have the money for licensing or whatever could just self publish and. And um, you know, come out on the platform, or come out with the software on the platform of their choice. You know, so you know we're gonna see a lot more crappy games, which is you know a lot of people make fun of indie games because of that. But we're gonna see a lot more people taking risks and trying out new things too. So, so then in return for those that like to play, you know, a hundred different games, this is it. I mean, this is your, this is your, this is your heaven right here. I mean, there's gonna be so many things coming out. Yes. Like Yogi said, there's going to be bad ones, you know, that are going to be, we're going to come out and try and then go, oh my God, I wouldn't even take a crap on this game, you know, kind of thing <laughs> like that. But you got to remember, for every couple of bad ones, there's going to be really one really, really good one that's going to make it. And I know that's not the numbers. It's, I think it's like, like 20 to 1. Every 20 games made, one makes it, something like that, some shit like that. Um, but I mean, even, you know, stuff, you know, even if we can actually sit there and play it back it, do whatever we need to do as, you know, as as us, because we want to give that information to all you guys. So, well, you know, with these price points, pretty much, if you make a, a, a decent amount of sales and you have a small following, you're gonna turn a little bit of a profit and be able to repeat it again and refine what you do. So it's encouraging. 
But um, moving on from that, um, Walmart, they announced that they're getting into the used game sales market, which is kind of funny because... I heard that. Yeah, that, that I thought that bus already kind of left, but... It does. It is interesting. They're gonna the GameStop is ha- gonna have to step things up because their their trading programs suck as they suck for the consumer unless you're really desperate. But for them, it's great. I mean, they it's like two bucks. That's all you get for almost yeah. a brand new game. You get like five. Oh yeah, they don't even factor in the freaking uh, condition of the games. You know, so yeah, de- definitely like like Carth said, it's definitely a little late. Oh yeah, and by the way, GUI is graphical user interface. <laughs> But uh, just wanted to make sure I covered that. I don't want people thinking I'm talking about like some kind of weird goo stuff, you know, nothing weird. But but yeah, I mean it's cool because with Walmart doing it, I mean I think even GameFly is yeah, GameFly does use game sales. Yeah, you know? like GameFly is something totally else, some something totally different to where all you gotta do is pay ten dollars a month and you can keep them for as long as you want to. Yeah, and but you just, you just after but after they rent out a game X amount of times, they sell them used. Yes, yes, but that's on their website, but that's that was already established. This is something that Walmart's actually coming out with to yeah. actually to actually compete and I and I don't want to say this too much because I'm not the you know, my words don't always make sense. But to actually compete with the places like GameStop. And I'm sorry to say this, but it's just another big guy pushing the little guys out of the way. I'm well, sorry game, to say it like that, but you got the well, GameStop no by no means little <laughs> Compared to Walmart, they're an ant. Yeah. Because you got, you know, with Walmart being, it's in it's in Arkansas and, uh, and in uh, Fayetteville or something like that. Um, I mean, you got, you know, 20 Walmarts in, you know, Texas alone. And you got, you know, 26 in Arkansas. In Michigan, you got uh, where I live. Um, and you got 27 Walmarts. You got, I think, what, like 16 just in Atlanta and Georgia? I mean, come on. Um, well, not not that many, but still, there's so many more WalMarts than there are GameStops just because it's that old. But I think this is if GameStop does not step up what they're doing or give people a little bit more money, you know, they need to look at three different you know three different things: how old is the game, what's the condition, and you know what what is the game. You know, if it's a you know a, a 2010 freaking Tiger Woods, I'll give you a, I'll give you 50 cents for it. That's about it. <laughs> Nobody's gonna play 2010, especially being you know 2014. So it's it's you know there's a lot of things that they should they should they should help out with and 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 give a little bit more money on it. But really, this is working for them. They're making more money right now. GameStop's making more money right now, especially with all the new pre-releases coming out. That they have um, close to you know they're the only ones allowed to release it on the release date. You know, and there's just things like that 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 I don't really think Walmart's going to roll over them, but they're trying. Well, the one thing that's beneficial is, you know, people in the ghetto that uh, spend their money on weed and booze could just uh, trade in games to get, get groceries <laughs> or other things. I'm just saying. You're terrible, Yogi. I, I'm just and- saying. I'm saying what everyone else is thinking. There's going to be a lot of ghetto stuff going on. It's like, I'm going to trade in all my kids' games and get myself some makeup. Mm-hmm. No, just just uh, send me a private message. I'll hook you up with somebody. Eh? I, never mind. I'm... Okay. Yeah, if you guys have ever, any of you that um, are watching now, if you guys have ever watched Jeff Dunham, okay, and you know the, the little puppet Peanut, right? Where he just go, meow, and then bring his head right over top of his head, you know, like it went way too far over. Yogi's is like way up here, so um, you know, love you, buddy. Uh, but <laughs> moving on here, we're getting sidetracked very, very badly. Yeah, you you take the rest of the obligatory news. I need I need to take a bio real quick. I broke the seal. You broke the seal. Where are we at? I don't exactly know. <laughs> Obligatory new there we are. EA's Peter Moore. He wanted to apologize for the April Fool's tweets. Uh, made in bad taste by Dice. And these tweets they mock now underpowered uh, the Wii U is. Uh, quantum entanglement uh, and, and zero latency. Um, 
why he did this is beyond me. Uh, why you would make.